Welcome to the D6 and Open D6 podcast. I am Dan Yeager from Gears and Steam. And I'm Nick. From wherever it is that Nick is. Yes. We're going to be talking today about uh, the Star Wars role-playing game. Uh, something that most people are uh, most familiar with D6 in regards to. <clears throat> yeah, so if you've played a d6 game in the past and you're familiar with it it was probably uh maybe second edition star wars d6 mm -hmm. the reigning was... reigning Go champion ahead. of the 90s yeah yeah it was immensely popular there have been two other star wars role-playing games since then there's the uh d20 star wars system and then there's another one that I haven't played. Yeah, it's think... from uh, Fantasy Flight. Although now it's being run by, I think, it's it's one of their sub-companies. I think it's called Dice. Something like that. Yeah, I don't know anyone that has played it that uh, has, you know, really sold the game to me. Mm -hmm. Like, they can't say, oh, it's got this mechanic on that d6 never had or uh it's got this you know magic system that the uh the star wars d20 system never had yeah um, it's got um a weird dice system probably the most uh notable all right, although well, they, uh, they change between the three of them yeah so since i've never played that one could you start me off and tell me a little bit about the fantasy flight one yeah yeah so they obviously there's a class system um within the class systems um there is a profession i think those are the the correct terms for them so if you are a scoundrel then you'd have a sub it's almost a subclass of like smuggler or um courier something that kind of fits within that demographic and then you get a skill tree for uh being like a smuggler and you essentially buy skills with your xp okay um that's the character creation part of it but um there's difficulty levels where you would roll a dice against um some other dice so it's a purple dice and the game master will decide how difficult it's something is and give you those purple dice to roll alongside your skill dice which are usually uh like green and yellow is the baseline and if you're better at something much like d6 uh you have more dice in that skill and then you can upgrade the dice to be different uh, colors so some of them are, are higher up and they they roll better things so all together you get your outcome and then something it's a little more set up i would say than d6 because there's uh, to an extent a guidebook of what you should do if someone succeeds to a certain degree or fails okay mm -hmm. so it sounds like it's um because it's got its own custom dice you have to get dice directly through them you can't or you know use an online dice roller that's probably an option mm -hmm. uh whereas with uh with d6 and d20 those dice are readily available pretty much anywhere yeah all right um is it more or less crunchy oh i probably should tell for the people listening what crunchy means when you've got a bunch of dice in your hands mm -hmm. and you're you've just got a ton of dice and you roll them around it makes this crunching sound oh yeah and that that's where the term crunchy comes from Mm -hmm. So when you hear a crunchy system, 
that means it's a system where you have to roll lots of dice all the time. And D20 and D6 are both known to be crunchy systems. Mm. But they're not... They're like middle ground crunchy systems. Um, then there's games where you just always are rolling dice for just literally everything. And those are the really crunchy systems. Whereas you've got more... Um, uh, you've got some diceless games like Amber Diceless that is the opposite of crunchy. Okay, so crunchy is more about uh, the reoccurrence of rolling rather than the amount of dice, or I guess they both kind of play into it. Yeah, they both kind of play into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would uh, say that uh, Fantasy Flight is crunchier than D6. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's uh, okay. That doesn't. That still doesn't sell me on the game, but. <laughs> Like that's that that's go in the opposite direction here. Yeah. You got to get special dice, and you uh, you yeah, have, have a lot of them constantly. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> have you ever played the D twenty Star Wars system? No, I was going to play Five E once, and that didn't pan out. Five E being obviously closer to the way D and D is set up. It actually uh, informs a lot of space D and D themes because they'll yeah. kind of just co-op those rules. So this was one of the first games that used the D twenty modern system, mm -hmm. um, and honestly, it's basically D and D. The yeah. Jedi memorize spells. <laughs> um, yeah, I've played it a. I, I played one campaign and that's enough. Um, it's of all the D20 games I've played, I think that mechanics wise, no offense to the GM, mechanics wise, it was probably the worst. Mm -hmm. um, so there are so many different rules that kind of step on each other's toes or unexpectedly amplify each other that if you've got a guy in your game that just knows how to read the rules and go oh well if i get this it'll dovetail with this and i'll get this next after it and you'll get that guy with almost a starting level character be just ruling the game and then you've got other people that are just like oh you know i want to pick up character uh playing a rogue sounds fun and you'll have you know a jedi with all the force powers and you'll have a rogue with like no abilities mm. or um you'll have an assassin that can do just all of the damage which is what i was playing um and if you have a guy that doesn't know the rules and another guy that's like new to the game, one of them just by random chance is going to just outpace the other one. Um, yeah. Now it wasn't super bad in the game that I played, but every once in a while there were rules like, um, you know, surprise 40 damage more than you were expecting to do just because of circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd imagine at the height of the prequel trilogy, um, it seemed like a natural step for them to make the Jedi characters more powerful. Because, you know, we'll look at the D6 system. They, <laughs> they didn't really know what to do with them. They didn't really understand them yet. Yeah, so with D20, they just you know, mapped Jedi onto wizard mm -hmm. and you can do that, but it didn't feel like a Jedi. It felt like a D and D wizard. Mm -hmm. It felt like this is somebody that's got, you know, powers that just don't belong in this setting and you get to run around with them. Um, but you know, any different game, it's 
you've got to look at the rules and say, okay, does this really give me the feel that I want? And I'm wanting to say that, to me, the D6 system, whereas it was a little bit better than the D20 system, they still didn't get Jedi. But uh, yeah, let's go on to the main topic here. D6 Star Wars. Excellent. So, uh, well, let's start off historically. 1987 was when it first came out. Um, I believe, um, well, obviously there were core rule books that came out. And then uh, the first adventure story that they did was Tattooing Manhunt. And looking at it now from the modern lens, um, I think a lot of the aesthetic from that kind of bled into the Mandalorian. The uh, sort of off-brandness of the characters. That was sort of their thing, is that they didn't want to touch any of the main cast of Star Wars. So they created kind of uh, equivalent characters. So you were given like a, a collection of bounty hunters that look like the bounty hunters that we know, but are different characters. Same thing sort of happens with um, the Inquisitorious, which has you know become more well known in the Disney era. Uh, it was a necessary thing for them to to create so that um, your GM wouldn't have to send Darth Vader after someone once they became uh, too powerful in the Force. Yeah, I've heard that. Uh, I've heard Tatooine Manhunt was just absolutely like everyone loved that. Yeah, I ran it. Uh, I ran it through text once, and I actually got the opportunity to play it in person, at least half of it. So it's always you know run over, and nice. it's a great story. And the cool thing about it is it's the beginning of a loose trilogy. So there's three adventure books. Um, another one being uh, Strike Force Fantipole, and then uh, Other Space. The three of these, there's characters that uh, you know continue across the the three books. So it's, I mean, not required, but recommended that you play them in that order. Yeah, that sounds that sounds really awesome, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about the, uh, the basics of Star Wars D6. Um, what, there's a couple of things that I think made it stand out. You have, I'll start with templates mm -hmm. in the back. There are a bunch of different templates, which are, you could think of them as maybe equivalent to classes in D and D. And each of these templates kind of looked like a character that either was reminded you of the movie character or, you know, just would exist in Star Wars. And they're all, they're not like the, you know, sneeze and they'll die first level characters from D&D, &D, but they're also not overpowered. They're a good pick up character you you grab the template you fill out the the skills that you want um you talk to your gm say hey can i have this ship instead or you know can i have uh this contact or what have you and your gm says you know oh that's great or nah that doesn't work in my setting and you know bam you've got a ready-made game you can just pick it up and run in minutes. Um, let's see. Another cool thing was, you know, they've got a, that a lot of the equipment from Star Wars, they've got all statted out. Um, and of course, I, I talked in other videos that uh, the rules are just superb. And 
through different videos, either in the past or in the future, we'll talk about a whole bunch of the different specific rules that uh, make D6 awesome. Yeah, and there's a lot. <laughs> Um, but then there's the downside. I will say there was definitely a downside. Mm -hmm. Um, a couple of things that they could like have polished a little better, like, you know, strength-based damage for weapons. That was mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily well polished, but okay. The big problem was the force. Um, so it was new and mysterious. Yeah. And <laughs> and kind of half baked in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um so the magic system and I I know that, you know, thousands of players out there have used their home brew of the force or have used, you know, some one version of rules or another, but nobody really nailed it down and said, "Hey, this works and it works well." But the reason why it didn't work. Oh, actually, here. What uh, what is your expression? Or what is your experience with uh, using the Force in Star Wars? Well, you mean the game specifically? Yeah, it's Star Wars D six. Yeah. Uh have I played a Jedi? There was um this one game I did where we uh, we were all Padawans. Although that was um. I can't remember what version of D6 that was. It was a a smaller one, but it wasn't like a mini six. Essentially, you know, I, I haven't uh, played a lot of Jedi, but I know buying the Force skills is a little odd, and you, you think to yourself, well, why can I do that? But I can't do this. Yeah, and then they named things... Um... Okay, so there were three three stats, control, sense, and alter. And instead of them being, you know, actual, you know, honest to goodness die codes um, for, like, attributes, they were, you know, sort of a launch-off point. So all of these sub-abilities were not skills. Mm -hmm. And so you have to get, you know, if you have this... If you have control and sense, you have access to some. If you've just got control, then some of these others require both control and sense or control and alter or sense and alter or control sense and alter. It was all way too complicated. The game did not want you to be a Jedi. Yeah, I kind of got that impression. <laughs> Once you manage to become a Jedi... Um, then there is a very steep curve or maybe the opposite. Essentially you become super overpowered if you play the game long enough. <clears throat> yeah. I guess that can be said about most of the, uh, the player base. If you add the, and that's why we have dice limits. Yeah. But, uh, and honestly, there is some level of overpoweredness in any game's magic system. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, there's not really a balance. Like, well, in D&D, when you're low level, the mage, you sneeze in their direction and they die. But once you get to level, say, seven, um, well, now they're, you know going one-on-one -on -one against dragons. Whereas the the fighter didn't scale quite as steeply. Um, now with D6, the, the uh, character progression is a little bit more organic because you don't have, you don't have levels. So your general durability doesn't just jump every, you know, every time you go on an adventure. You get uh, you get a uh, little bit more skilled in any of the different you know abilities you've got, and any character can have access to skills. The difference is the force not everyone has access to. 
So that's one thing that only Jedi characters have access to. Mm -hmm. um, but even with those flaws, it was it was one of my absolute favorite games. Um, honestly, when I was once I started playing D six, I'm like, okay, yeah, there's little areas like the Force that don't really work. But everything else works so well that I almost abandoned all other settings or all other systems. I mean, I'll play World of Darkness. I'll play, you know, Amber Diceless. I'll play um, Legend of the Five Rings. Big fan of Legend of the Five Rings. Um, you know, I play a lot of different systems. But, you know, when you get right down to it, if you want to go this is the best mechanic, I always have to go with D6. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, they fixed most of the uh, things that were kind of clunky in D6 Star Wars in the uh, open D6 versions. Yeah, as well as re-up. Oh, uh... we should talk about re-up yeah. in a future video. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's... I'm going to put that on the list. <laughs> Yeah, All we right. got 1E and 2E. So the big things to know about Star Wars. Mostly compatible. With some exceptions. All right, but before we wrap things up, is there any other uh, things about uh, Star Wars D6 that you would like to talk about? No, well, nothing comes to mind. All right. Well, with that, uh, everyone, may the Force be with you. Catch Always. <laughs> Bye.